Hello and welcome back to Start Learning Numbers. And as always, many many thanks to all the nice people that support me on Steady or PayPal. In today's part 8, we will finish our discussion about the integers and introduce the multiplication. We've already learned that we can write the integers as this set. Of course, later we can just drop this index here. But for the moment we still need it, because we want to define the multiplication by using the equivalence classes. For example, the integer 2 was defined as the equivalence class of 6, 4. Here I already told you, just think of 6 minus 4. This helps understanding the whole construction and also the definition of the multiplication now. For this we take two equivalence classes, put them together with a dot and then we define a new one. Because we already know what we want, there's only one possibility here. Here you should think of what happens when we multiply a minus b times c minus d. Naturally, we want the distributive law, which means we can expand the whole expression. With that, it should look like this. Therefore, this one should be the choice for the first component and this one for the second component. Therefore, we have this equivalence class. And please keep in mind, the multiplication and the addition here are the well-known operations we have in N0. Okay, by knowing the definition of the multiplication here, we can do exactly the same steps as we have done in the last video for the addition. The first point is, this operation here is well defined. So the result as an equivalence class does not depend how we represent the two equivalence classes here. The procedure how one can show that you have already seen in the last video. Knowing this, we also can just state all the properties the integers have with respect to the multiplication. And please don't forget, this multiplication is now a new map defined for the integers. First we have its associative, so we can set parentheses as we want. Then it is also commutative, so we can change the order. And then of course the next one is very important, when we multiply with 1, we don't change anything. So 1 is the neutral element with respect to the multiplication. And the last one is simply that together with the addition, we have the distributive law. Ok, proving all these rules works like for the addition and shouldn't make any problems. For this reason, let's look at some examples. So here we multiply the two integers 4 and 2. Of course we know they are given by these two equivalence classes. Then by the definition of the multiplication, we have for the first position 4 times 2 plus 0 times 0. And the second position gets 4 times 0 plus 0 times 2. Hence you see, it's not so surprising, we indeed get out 8. Ok, now you could say, maybe it's more interesting to multiply two negative numbers. This means that you don't change so much, only the two positions here are exchanged. Therefore, in the next step we multiply 0 with 0 plus 4 times 2. And then for the second position we just get out 0 again. So indeed, the result is the same, we get out 8 again. Therefore, you see here the general rule that comes out, if you multiply two negative numbers, you always get out a positive number. So you see, the integers are very interesting and you can do nice calculations with them. However, you immediately see one flaw here, you don't find inverses with respect to the multiplication. For example, you don't find a number you can multiply with 2, such that 1 comes out. In order to do this, we need even more numbers. And that's what we do in the next video. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.